In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, I'd like to show you some of my favorite keyboard shortcuts that speed up my editing. The first one I like to feature is the one that allows me to bring new elements into my media room. And when I'm in the program, I hold the control key down and hit the Q key. And that opens up my file system. I navigate where I want, click on the item and click open and immediately it imports it into my file system. I find that the very easiest way to import something brand new in my system. Let me give you a couple of others. One that I often use, and you'll see here in the tutorials, is the screen capture. It turns any frame into a graphic image. I simply do Control P, and then it will ask for the file where I want it. It will want to name it Snapshot. I can call it whatever I want, click on save, and now I have that frame as an image. It will import it into the media room as well, and I will see it here. Here it's called Snapshot. It's added to my media room, added to my hard drive. I can now use it. One of the things I like to do is navigate on my timelines. And one of the ways you can easily do that is use the page up and page down key. Now, if you look here where the timeline indicator or scrubber is, if you look in the time code, I'm at 1 minute, 42 seconds, and 3 frames. If I hit the page up key, watch what happens. It changes. It highlights that particular clip on track number 1 and tells me I'm 22 seconds, 21 frames into that clip. When I hit page down, now my reference is my entire project. So I can tell whether I'm working on the clip and it will highlight it or go back to the project. Now there's more uses than that. When I have the page down and it's set to the entire project, if I press the home key, it goes to the beginning of the project. The end key will take me to the end of the project. Likewise, if I'm somewhere else, let's go back here and I'll press the uh, page up key. Now I'm in reference to that particular clip. You notice the time code changed again. But now if I hit the home, it goes to the beginning of the, that element and it takes me to the end of the element. It helps me navigate e either between the individual elements that are on my timeline or the whole project. So it's a very useful thing, not only for maneuvering, but to seeing where I am in the time code relative to that component or relative to that entire. I'm going to move over here and let's assume I want to move one second left or right. Now what I used to do was click on the seek by indicator and change this from frame to second. Here's a quicker way to do that. Hold the alt key down and press the up key and you notice the time code will change. I have moved one second to the right, alt up. If I want to move one second to the left, I move alt down. So when I have any component selected, I can move one second at a time through those two options. I can actually move an object one frame at a time. Let's say I have the text here in this particular element. We'll highlight it here so you can see it. My special October Canyon Tours is my title here. If I want to move that just one frame at a time, the way I can do that is I can hold the Alt key down and hit the left or right arrow. Now you notice the time code in here on the screen. If I use Alt-Right, you notice this, it goes to 224. Okay, and if I use Alt-Right again, it's 223 because it's moving the entire clip one frame at a time to the left or to the right. Now if we magnify and zoom in a lot, we'll be able to see this. Okay, I'll use Alt, right arrow, and you see it's moving on the timeline as it's expanded here, one frame at a time, right or left. Alt, right arrow, Alt, left arrow. Not a bad option when you're looking at the program. Another way in which you can move not the clip, but the timeline marker or the cursor is to use the comma and period keys. These are very well known in major editing. You hold anywhere and you press the period and you're going to move your timeline marker or scrubber one frame to the right at a time. 
And then if you use the comma key on the keyboard, you'll move the scrubber one frame to the left. So to do fine tune editing, the comma key and the period key are very, very useful. Sometimes you wanna drop a timeline marker or marker of any kind, depending on what's highlighted. If I click off here and I hit the M key, it will give me a timeline marker. If I want a marker in the clip, I highlight the clip and press the M key and it will give me a clip marker. If I want a marker in my vocal track, I move the cursor wherever I want it, press the M key, it will give me a vocal track marker. And so those are nice. If you want to remove them, you hold down the shift key at that same place and hit the M key and it will disappear. So if I want to remove this, I'll do shift M and I can do the same thing. You can do it for the timeline. You can do it for any component that you have on your screen. If you want to drop a marker or remove a marker. So that's really helpful. I use that quite a bit. Let's go to the end of our project. Oftentimes I may get to a place where I want to add or drop another element in. I want to move everything else to the right. So if that's something I want to do, let's say we want to take this element here and drop it between these two clips and shove everything in the project to the right. I highlight it, I hold down the shift key and drag it and drop it and let go and it moves everything to the right. Now here it split my vocal. I normally would put that on last, but you notice every single element and every single track is moved to the right. And it's very simple to do. I don't have to work hard to position it. I just use the shift key when I'm dragging it down and it will move it quite well. And of course, control Z is my, one of my most favorite keys, key combinations because it allows me to undo whatever my last command was. So these are some of the shortcuts. There are many more, but these are some that I find most useful when I'm editing in CyberLink PowerDirector.